morning, everyone. Uh, as Pastor Ray said, my name is Chipa Makaya, and that is Prince. I would like to thank Pastor Ray and Sarah, the church leadership, for allowing us to be here and to be able to share with you what the Lord is doing. I also want to thank all of you for supporting us, and most recently, of course, through the book drive. We are very, very grateful. Uh, you can imagine we have an average of 20 kids per class, and sometimes we just have the book for the teacher. So the books that you have given us have made a great impact. We are very grateful. Um, there's one thing that I have understood <laughs> as we travel, that sometimes there's an assumption that people are hearing me, and yet my accent is very different. Just turn to your neighbor and ask them, can you hear her? <laughs> ask, them, ask your neighbor, can you hear her? <laughs> okay, so I hope we are now together and we'll be able to flow together. Liberty Visions is an organization that the Lord laid on our hearts when we're still here at, uh, in the U.S. at Johnson Bible College in 2005, but we did not know how it would pan out. We did not know how it would work. Now it is a registered non-governmental organization in Kenya, and over the years that we've been in Kenya, the Lord has worked for it to become what it is today. I would like to introduce you to our family. Uh, Prince and I have three biological children. Coburn is 28 and is living in Mississippi. He got married last year. Uh, he's married to Amy. And then we have Kamel is 24. She is running her own business online. She's a social media consultant. She's 24. And then we have Kaleo, who is 20. Uh, she was born here, and she is learning how to be a nurse in Louisiana. Liberty Visions as an organization is divided into two main parts, Liberty Visions Media and the Family Ministry. Liberty Visions Media is directed by Prince. Um, and Prince works in partnership with a number of Christian organizations. For example, Timothy Initiative is an evangelism organization, so he helps them to document the stories of how the people got saved. United Bible Societies makes Bibles, Navigators, the, the particular section he works with, uh, focus on parenting uh, for intercede. He mostly documents what that ministry is doing, and he, works, he also works in partnership with churches to be able to preach the gospel in every possible way using media. Um, for the family ministry, I am in charge of the family ministry, and one of the products from the family ministry is this book. A few years ago, I started writing this book and the aim really was to focus on Prince praying for him when he went out. And, but now, where we are today, as nations, whatever happens in the US slowly trickles down to the rest of the nations. So I'd like to encourage us to, to get a book. It's for $5, but the aim is to pray for families across the nations. For example, you, you might say, I've been married forever, I don't have, I'm not going anywhere. So you are talking about praying for your spouse, I don't need to. But I would like you to think about people like Coburn who just got married just now, that they may be able to run the race to the end. We also want to pray for choices that the children are going to make um, in this generation so that they choose God and they choose the ways of God in relation to family. Um, we have a Sunday School product where Prince makes me look good as I'm sharing the word. <laughs> you find it on YouTube 
and its Bible stories by Chipomakaya. When we talk about Liberty Visions, most people think about the school, Liberty Visions Learning Center. But there are other things that happen within Liberty Visions. Liberty Visions Learning Center serves marginalized children. Um, their parents go out and work and make as much as $5 per day, which simply allows them to get money for dinner. Some of the stories are very sad because parents can go out to look for a job and they don't get the job. So they ask a daughter about 10, 11, there is a saying in Swahili, let a pesa, which means go and get the money. So they will talk to their daughter to go and get the money. And that happens through prostitution. So the, the families in Mujimua Wuruma have a real need. Um, the school started as a library in 2007 with six children. And we want to introduce Christ to the children. We do that by giving them a memory verse per week. The teacher will talk about the memory verse. They will work through the memory verse one per week. Um, and then we also have a time that the government gives where we can teach the Bible. So we have a particular curriculum that we are following right now as a school that will focus on spiritual formation. However, because of the impact that the children experience in Mujiwa Wuruma, that time is not enough for absolute spiritual formation. And there is need for us to spend more time with the children. Right now, we have a total number of 145 students from age four to age 11, preschoolers up to grade six, and there are 12 of us on staff. We have two ladies. We have two ladies who cook and clean, and then a main teacher in every class, myself and the security guard. How, how can you help us meet the needs of the school? We have a program where we run, which we run and we give $30 per month per child, sponsor a child, and that $30, we use it to buy one uniform per academic year. We also give them a snack at 10 o'clock. We also give them lunch um, during the academic year. We pay the teacher's salaries. And when we have some money, we will buy some textbooks and any other thing that is possible or that is required within the school. For instance, you can have a child come in, they don't have pencils. Ideally, they should have their pencils and their pens. So you send them back home, they come back, they still don't have the pencil and their pen. So really, as a school, it is better to buy the pencil than to keep chasing them and wasting academic time. Um, the parents contribute one dollar per month towards the salary of the security guard. However, some of them sincerely struggle. So again, we'll chase the child for the dollar and then they will go home and then they'll come back with nothing the next day. You chase them again and then they come back for the dollar. Um, but we try our best for the parents to also contribute into the lives of the children. What are some of the challenges that we have right now? The school sits on government property. And because it is government property and it is a political issue, no one is willing to sign a document that the school exists in that spot. We have had different government departments come and look at the school, and they've said, oh, you're doing a good job. Oh, please carry on. But no one is willing to give us that document. The document is very important because it allows us to register the school. It allows us to grow the school, but we cannot grow the school on the 60 by 50 because there is no space. As of now, the government has introduced a new curriculum. 
And over years, we have been in limbo on what the government would tell us to do. They finally made a decision and said the children can stay in the primary schools. However, for us, we were not allowed to keep our children. Why? Because we don't have the space. The curriculum is very practical in nature. The children need to learn how to cook. They need to go into laboratories. They need to look after chicken and rabbits. We need bigger space. We don't have the space to be looking after the chicken. We need a minimum of four acres of land to set up the school. However, we are hoping to keep the children with us, the older children with us on the property, so we need accommodation for them. We also need space to put up the special rooms that the government requires. We also need uh, to have spaces where we are going to cook the food uh, and a leadership training wing. One can ask why leadership training? Because they, we have been giving them some academics, but they are not able to get jobs. What is it that other children know that enables them to go for an interview, pass the interview, and keep the job? And part of it is simple skills like communication or teamwork or even simply respecting authority. There's someone above me. And all these things will be covered in the leadership training. We also want to teach them some skills and as I mentioned earlier, we also hope keeping them longer with us will enable deeper spiritual formation. How can you help us? Um, we run the $30 per month per child program. Alternatively, you can give towards buying the land. Alternatively, you can start praying about coming to Kenya and visiting us. Would love to have you. Thank you so much for having us. So you've heard this morning that there's lots of ways that you can get involved. First of all, it's something that we don't think of until last. Pray. You pray first and ask for God to give you direction and guidance. You've seen on the screen this morning the immediate needs. Now, I have to be honest with you. I'm going to be the guy that prays for the 10 acres. <laughs> I would like to see 20. <laughs> but God will give what he desires. But don't put God in a box. Don't you dare put God in a box. Let him equip Prince and Chipo how he sees fit. We can support individual children. And, and I want you to just consider something for a minute. I want you to consider this. If you have children, if you've had children and you send them to school, they've got their pens, their paper, their paper, their pencils. You've got children that come to school to Prince and Cheapo that don't have a pencil. So how can you make that happen? Well, you can support a child. You say, well, Pastor Ray... I'm giving tithes, I'm giving offerings. Well, you heard this morning how God will just, he'll give you what you need. He just wants you to be faithful. Give to him your first fruits. And that's one of the reasons why I had Adam come up this morning and talk about that very thing. That's one reason this morning why I had Steve come and talk to you about, you know, our stewardship commitment with the carpet and the pews. Look what God's already done. He'd do immeasurably more if you're just faithful. What's he going to do if you're taking care of a child all the way around the world that needs to hear about Jesus? But don't do it so he'll bless you. Do it because you just want to be faithful. Do it because you want to be faithful. Now, here's the thing. If the children stay with Prince and Chipo, 
they get told about Jesus more and more and more. And isn't that what's really important? Told about the truth. Told about the truth. There's one truth in this life, and it's Jesus Christ. He is the way. There is no other way. And wouldn't it not be marvelous at some point to visit Prince and Chipo and just see children running around everywhere who've been told about Jesus Christ saving grace? Wouldn't it? I've never been, but I would like to go. I would like to go myself. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. He goes on in verse 7 to say this, and I believe this is equally as important as that first verse in 6. If you've known me, you would have known the Father also. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. You know, this is something that Prince and Chipo want to forward to the world, the community that they live in. Jesus never said he knew the way. He said he was the way. He is the way. He didn't promise he would teach you the truth. He is the truth. Jesus is the truth. He didn't offer you the secrets of life. He is life. Jesus is life. As I was kind of thinking yesterday afternoon when I put these notes in, in my Bible, I want you to consider a few things. If you don't know where you're headed, Jesus is the way. If you're confused, and I've had a lot of people tell me I'm confused a whole lot. <laughs> Maybe you're confused this morning. Jesus can give you the truth, and he can... He can take that confusion right away, immediately. If you're dead inside, if you're dead, Jesus is the one that gives eternal life. There's lots of mission fields in this world. And you've heard of one that's really important this morning. Now, I'm not up here to try to sell you on anything. I'm not a salesman. I'm a pastor. But I'm telling you where my heart's at this morning. And it's with Prince and Chipo. Because they're doing God's work. They're presenting the gospel message and they're teaching children. They're teaching. They're teaching truth. Now, to a lot of people, that can be real confusing. It was confusing to the Pharisees that we're standing in front of Jesus while he was speaking these words to them. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. They were absolutely confused because what they saw was when a man would enter the tomb, he was just dead. Some believed that there wouldn't be a bodily resurrection, but Jesus would prove to them otherwise because he would walk out of that tomb one day. And he would prove to them that death no longer had a sting and hell no longer had a hold. The grave would be empty. And friends, I'm going to promise you one thing. If you belong to Jesus Christ, when he comes back to take you home, your grave will be empty too. You're going to burst forth, and body and spirit are going to be reunited. That's truth. That's the way. And that's life. I want to just tell you something as I shut this out. Without Jesus, there is no going. There's no going. Without Jesus, there's no going. Without his truth, there is no knowing. 
Without his life, there's no living. You've heard this morning what living can be, what life can be, what knowing and going can be. It's not complicated. This morning, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, then I am going to put within your mind and your heart a sense of urgency. Urgency. That today's the day that you make that right for time and eternity. Well, you say, Pastor Ray, you're giving an invitation and we've just talked about missions. Well, hey, there's been lots of missionaries over the years that that's what they do. They evangelize and they talk about the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And that's the truth. So this morning, if you don't know Christ, then I implore you to make that right today. If there's a burden or a barrier between you and God himself, then there's one that can make that right, and it's your advocate, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you make it right today.